Well, welcome everybody to another Ansteads Facebook Live, YouTube Live video. And we're gonna have a good time today. Uh, special guest, hey uh, with Cohiba Cigar yeah. brand. We've got Shaw Williams and Wayne Anstead with us. How are you doing today, Wayne? I'm doing just great. It's great, great to be here, Tom. Uh, we got a special guest here. We have Sean Williams, uh, brand ambassador for Cohiba, uh, that's uh, sold by General Cigar, and. Uh, We'd like uh, maybe a chance to, for Sean to tell, tell us a little bit about himself, and uh, we'll get him to tell us a little bit about his cigars that they have. John? Awesome. You guys hear me okay? You guys hear me okay? Uh, a little bit. A little bit better, yeah. Is there a bird squirking in your backyard or something? Yeah, okay, you guys, you guys hear me good. Uh, for, for a second, I thought I lost you. So uh, There you go. We hear uh, you good now. Yeah, well, first off, thanks for having me. Uh, uh, Wayne, I miss you guys. I uh, haven't been over in, uh, in Fayetteville and seems like forever. So I'm glad you guys are doing well and uh, and, and still uh, plugging along. Uh, terrific, terrific operators, and it's always good to catch up. So um, I'm just here doing my thing with Cohiba. Um you know, been uh, on board with the brand now for just over three years, um, having a, a great time being a part of uh, innovating and bringing new things to the market and uh, and uh, also, you know, continue to solidify the, um, you know, the existing, um, uh, you know, brands that have been out there for years that people have, you know, loved over the years. So uh, just happy to be here with you guys. Well, good. Glad to have you. Uh, so how long did you say you've been with General Cigar? Um, this uh, past April made three years. Three years. Three years. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's been a lot. I've noticed there's been a lot of changes in the Cahiba brand over the last few years. You know, forever it was just the original Cahiba, and uh, I think they did the extra vigoroso, um, and then the blue came out. But we're seeing a lot of other stuff coming lately. So maybe you can tell us about the new lines. Yeah, so uh, obviously, you know, the Red Dot, which was the, the sort of original domestically available release, uh, the old school Cameroon has been around for you know, a couple of decades now. And uh, the Black is also one that's been around a long time. The uh, Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper, yeah. um, sort of the first real meaty Maduro from, uh, from Cohiba. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's, there's been a number of lines that have sort of been in and out, some special releases and so forth. Uh, but the Blue actually, very very successful uh, um, line in the uh, in the portfolio was actually released in um, the spring of 2017. Probably, man, a month or two before I officially came on board with the brand. So I wish I could take credit for it, but um, it actually uh, preceded my uh, time with the company. But um, up until um, probably. The Connecticut Shade, uh, the Paper Blue was the success, most successful launch in the history of the brand. Did very, very well. Um, it still does very, very well, especially you know, since we refresh the, pack, the packaging across the entire portfolio. Um, but uh, again, you have the Blue. Um, I came on board, and the first cigar that I sort of tinkered with under the Cohiba uh, banner was the Silencio, which was the one that, that uh, we created. A brand new offering, which is an event on all these cigars. My sister is a blend for Cohiba. So that was sort of my first foray into sort of taking with the blends here. Uh, but since then, we put out Cohiba Spectre 2019 and, I'm sorry, 2018 and 2019. Uh, also, Connecticut Shade, of course, last year. And uh, most recently, the Cohiba Royale, the one that uh, uh, you and I are burning away. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So it's just about, uh, you know, kind of expanding the portfolio, expanding the footprint. Uh, making sure that we're, um, you know, being, uh, you know, uh, more inclusive and expansive with the profile. Uh, and, and in particular, kind of going towards fuller body, more Nicaraguan central profiles. Yeah. But it seems like everybody's loving Nicaraguan stuff. So I think, you know, the blue, you're right, has done incredibly well for us. And we do quite well with the Nicaraguan one is, uh, in the shop here as well. Uh, the Royal here has been kind of new for us. I think it's only been out a little while, but uh, so far it's been selling through. It's been selling through real well for us. So yeah, it's, a great, it's a great smoke and it's a great product. And uh, uh, you know, it's always fun to try something new. That's that's the best thing. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, you know, and, you know kind of sort of like me. I have a, you know, a cabin full of, you know, a million different cigars. Not literally, but, you know, you have humidor. And your store full of a ton of different cigars. So, 
uh, even with me being the Cohiba guy, I still want to try something new. Now, what that does is that that, that has me always sort of creating stuff in the Cohiba sort of uh, pipeline. Some of them may never see the light of day, but at least they get a lot of test samples. Right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Tough job. Somebody has to do it. Somebody has to do it, man. I got to try right. it. Hey, Sean, I have a quick question for you. So, I noticed that the um, you guys um, um, yes, I saw you flash the Nicaragua across the uh, across the screen a little bit a while ago. How's, yeah. that, how's that been doing for you? Uh, this is a great cigar. I think people like it because it's got a bold, rich flavor to it. Um, that's very different, you know, from the traditional Dominican. You know, have lost Cohiba. audio. You lost a- audio. You sure? You should be able to hear me, okay? Wait. Can you hear me, Tom? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But the, I was saying the, so I don't the know Nicaragua. If broke up. Uh, I was asking about the Nicaragua. How's the Nicaragua been doing for you guys? Uh, I think it's it's going well. You know, it's got a bolder, richer flavor than I think a lot of people are used to. Um, they're used to that calm, that mild, that smooth I Dominican flavor. I can't, what, if Thomas is, I think Thomas may be speaking. I can't hear him. Uh oh, can't hear me. Hang on. Well, I, I, well, he's working on that. He, the uh, the Nick Rogers did very well. I think the bold flavor profile is what people are really, really liking about it. And yeah. so, the cigar has done well for us. It's kind of nice because I mean, we just carried just the original Cohiba for so many years, you know. And uh, the black, of course, I always forget about that one. That's an old standby. But uh, I think the Nicaraguan's been one of the stronger movers for us uh, as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, with that, if, if that profile works for you, I think the Royale is going to be uh, something. That- Does well. So, thank you, thank you. Um, you see anything new on the horizon? What you working on up there? Something new? Well, uh, obviously, you know this this the royal one that, that you're not smoking is just at the market. So this is going to be uh, the focus certainly through uh, for the most part through the rest of this year. Uh, I don't know that we're going to put any big projects out, but we're always working on stuff. So mm-hmm. um, I really want to kind of go in the direction of, uh, and hopefully, as a retailer, you guys will appreciate it. Not always coming out with uh, a full scale regular production line that you know that you know maybe cannibalizes some of the stuff that we have on the market already, uh, and also something that you know from a retail perspective you guys have to absorb in and bring into the inventory, which gets to be kind of tricky. I mean, I know this there's not an infinite amount of space that you have to work with, so we have some, some smaller special release projects that we're certainly going to be teeing up. Hopefully, get something out of towards the end of the year, but if not. Certainly in the spring, uh, we have a few things online, uh, and of course this year's Spectre uh, that'll come out in the fall, uh, which you know we've been working on feverishly with that. Um, you know, very very um, ambitious with the packaging, so to speak. Um, the cigar itself is phenomenal, so we're excited about that. Um, but yeah, just 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 really just try to you know you know make it everything make everything make sense. Uh, we want to have a portfolio that makes sense for you as a retailer. Um, and we don't want to sort of step on ourselves as far as what we have currently out there on the market. Um, obviously, you guys are familiar with the, uh, the packaging refresh that, that we've kind of gone through. And we're still sort of working that through. There's still a lot of old packaging on the shelves, so we're trying to work that through so that at some point when the consumer walks in the retail uh, humidor, there's a symmetry across uh, the brand as far as what the packaging looks like and feels like, and, and it all makes sense. Um, you know, and in particular with the rent now, which was probably right. the most drastic of all the changes, uh, having been in uh, the natural color box for a couple of decades, now going to something that really, really pops a lot more, and also embracing the name Red Dot, because before it was just a green with Cameroon, like the original, uh, what people always refer to as the Red Dot. So we wanted to kind of tie in uh, that nomenclature as far as what people just sort of readily refer to it as with the new packaging to try to hopefully connect the dots and not confuse people. So 
that's going to be really important, making sure that that all of the, the, the new look and feel translates on the shelves and that the consumer understands it and the retailers understand it. So we, we're going to be plenty busy without having to, 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 to bring out a bunch of new products. Uh, again, aside from Spectre and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, the big well, thing and, is... And the Spectre is just, if I remember right from last year, it's just a limited run, correct? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, this year, we have, we have an uh, exact count of the boxes. First year, we did commercially available under 400 boxes. Last year was even less. It was under 200 boxes. And it's all always based on the tobacco that we have. I have sort of an idea of what it's going to be this year, but I don't want to say um, because if I say it, people will hold me to it. Uh, <laughs> but it's going to be it's still something that's super limited. It'll only be, you know, uh, you know, a few hundred boxes. And once it's gone, it's gone because each blend is very, very, uh, uh, you know, really specific for what we have available. Um, right. You know, and what's gonna what's gonna you know kind of come into play as it relates to that cigar? So, so you'll never get another 2018 Spectre. You never get another 2019 Spectre. So, 2020 is gonna be uh, uh, sort of a one of one of a kind, one and done blend. And uh, and then we we'll see what we're gonna do for 2021. So, um, you know, we, we, we don't want to overplay it. Uh, we want to make sure that the tobacco makes sense. And, and um, you know, and, 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 and it's a fun project and it's not tired. So, so far it's really exciting. People really look forward to it. We're excited about doing it this year, but we'll see what we do for next year. Okay. So, well, we had the uh, the Spectre. Did you guys, uh, were, you, were you guys able to get Spectre there last year? Yeah, you didn't yeah we, got it, we got it last year. Yeah, it doesn't last Spectre. long. Okay? That's not and a bad thing when you're a retailer, right? Yeah. yeah. A guy bought like uh, one or Absolutely. two or so. Absolutely. And then our guy came and he bought the entire and rest of the Royale. Um, did you get it in in several sizes? Well, well, we only make three sizes for it. We make the Grand Royale, which is the the, 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 the short, uh, sort of a uh, beefier Rothschild, and of course we do the Robusto, we do the uh, the Toro. So we have three sizes. Uh, how, how many sizes did, did you guys we bring? We just in? in the Toro. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Shelf yeah. wise, you know, we, at the end of the year we always analyze what we sold the most of, and mm -hmm. Robusto and Toro are neck and neck every every year. Um, but uh, I think the Toro always beats it out just a little bit. So typically, when we bring a new cigar in, uh, we'll, we typically will try to try to bring in uh, a Robusto or a Toro. But uh, this is a little pricier cigar, so we thought we'd give it a shot uh, in the Toro range. And it's, like I said, it's selling well. Uh, I was looking there today; we're just about out. But uh, good, good, yeah. good. And the Toro size certainly makes sense. I, I tell everybody, the Toro, as boring as it may sound, uh, it's my favorite size of the cigar. And it's pretty simple as a cigar maker. When we work on the blend, we always work on it in a Toro size. That's always a prototype. So my first experience with any cigar that I've had hand in creating is always a Toro. So it's just natural that I go back to that original experience. So, um, you know, if I'm going to grade a cigar, um, I have to try it in a Toro size. And of course, I smoke Robustos, but yeah, I don't do I don't do much in the way of and I'm not a big rain gauge person. So, uh, you know, I smoke hours that we make, but that's not a whole lot. Uh, but yeah, I mean. 70% of the time I'm smoking something, it's a Toro. So you, you, you got the right size there. Yep, good, yeah. <laughs> well, Sean, can you give us a, a quick, short, little history? Tom was saying something. I can't hear him on my end, so if he has a uh -oh. question, uh, I need your help right here. What's the question, Sean? Um, oh, I'm saying, okay. Quick, just a quick, short history of Cohiba. A lot of people get confused. They don't know it, but it's a nice little story behind it. I miss you that. Okay? I can't hear him, so. You hear me, Wayne? I didn't hear you either. How about now? Can you hear it's me now, Wayne? I can hear you now. Yeah, I was asking a strong I can hear you, little, but I can't hear Tom. And I, and I, 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 I thought I heard little, him uh, initially say so. Maybe a little short history of Cohiba, since maybe a lot of viewers don't know that little story. So he's asking for a short story of the history of Cohiba. You know how it got started, how the name came about, and uh, oh, a lot of people don't know about that. Um, well, there, there's, there's there's sort of two stories, right? I mean, the original story, obviously, uh, you know, it's it's as as with a number of cigars on the market, uh, it's a Cuban legacy name um, introduced here in the states in the late '80s, early '90s, for the most part, as far as you know, uh, broad commercial availability. Um, and as I understand it, Cohiba is just just sort of a, uh, I'm not sure which Indian um, uh, culture it was, but just a name for tobacco, basically. So it's nothing um, super um, clandestine about the name. 
Um, but aside from that, I mean, it, it's been uh, uh, the Red Dot Cohiba has been here available in the U.S. except for a, a couple of decades now. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, for me with the Cohiba name uh, or, 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 you know, under, understand and appreciate how, how prominent that name is in the cigar uh, uh, community in general. It's sort of like one of those, you know, even if you don't smoke cigars, you know the Cohiba name. And uh, what we try to make sure here is that, um, you know, we make sure that 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 the name uh, is well represented here, obviously, and we offer um, just a good sort of uh, um, um, diverse variety of, of, of blends and profile, not to get too crazy. Uh, we kind of stay true to what we are, uh, an ultra premium brand and medium to, to, to full range. And, um, you know, just kind of kind of held true to that over the last, uh, you know, couple of decades and for me, certainly the last few years. But uh, as far as the history, I mean, it, it's basically the Red Dot Cohiba has been here now, um, you know, since uh, since I was graduating from high school uh, 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 thereabouts. And uh, and it's done well ever since. And I just try to do my best not to screw it up. You know what I mean? Good. So with, with everything going on in the world, you know, all this COVID-19 and everything, how, how are you guys doing factory wise, um, production wise? Good uh, question. Good question. Um, so, as you're familiar, and I'm sure any, any your listeners here who are kind of in tune to what's going on in the cigar uh, community, uh, basically all of the production factories that we had, uh, you know, our largest uh, factory is in Honduras. Uh, that's where we made the Cohiba Royale. First time we ever actually made a Cohiba out of the Honduras factory. That's the largest one that we have as far as general cigar. Second largest is in Santiago, Dominican Republic. And the smallest factory is in Esteli, Nicaragua. And all three of those countries basically were offline. Uh, they just shut down for some uh, time period. Now, as it stands, they're all back open to a degree, but in very limited capacity. So uh, we are producing now uh, in all of the factories, um, you know, to some degree, but certainly at a diminished capacity for now. We'll, we'll still see how that goes as things open up. Um, but we, we don't foresee any any serious issues as it relates to supply in the immediate you know, uh, uh, term. If we, t if we look look out over the next quarter and so forth, uh, now obviously if the, if the shutdown continues, you know, in these countries, we will kind of have to see what early next year looks like. But we, we feel pretty uh, comfortable as far as where we are with the availability of product, what we have here in the states, what we have aging already, and what's in production. Uh, we don't have any, any any overriding concerns. Again, that can change if you know this this shutdown continues uh, for you know. An even more extended period of time, but as of right now, we're, we're getting through okay. That's good because I know going through this, we, we're pretty much sitting on a. We typically have a ninety-day supply of product based on our business. Uh, but, uh, so far, we've not seen a lot of interruptions. Some sizes aren't available from some different companies, um, but overall, we're starting to see stuff come through fairly easily uh, right now. So, I don't know if a lot of stores are not being able to sell cigars. So we're not fighting as big a pool to get what we need, but we haven't really struggled to get product, which is kind of nice. Good, good, good. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised when, when everything first happened. Uh, we shut down our administrative offices in Richmond and everybody had to telecommute. Um, but we were able to run a, a, you know, a scaled down crew in Hampton where we fulfilled. So the warehouse never shut down one day. We've never missed any orders. Even in the midst of this, we took in you know, the, the, the very first sort of production run of the Cuevo Royale. I mean, a pretty hefty quantity of cigars. Got them in, integrated into the system and even fulfilled orders, man. So um, so it's one thing to sort of not miss a step, just kind of fulfilling your normal day-to-day -day orders. But it's another thing to take in a brand new product release, uh, get that out to all the press, to all the field salespeople, um, you know, uh, all the, the, the pre-orders and so forth, and kind of manage through the nuts and bolts of that and, and, and uh, Missed it without a beat. We, we had some issues that's related to damaged packaging, but, you know, that wasn't related to COVID or anything. It was just, uh, um, you know, goofy stuff that happens in shipping cigars. But I was I was really, 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 uh, 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 you know, encouraged by uh, the way, not just us, I mean, uh, other cigar companies as well, were, were able to sort of still fulfill and get product out to you guys. I mean, ultimately, we're all in, in this together, man. So whatever we need to do to make sure that you guys get through this, um, as unscathed as possible helps us all. So um, I, I was happy that, that we were able to do that. Yeah. Well, it's it's a good. You got the rep that we have, Carolee. She's fantastic. She does a good job uh, representing all the brands for us, and uh, 
you keep us in the loop all the time. So that's kind of nice, you know. Yeah, I know it's tough everybody being off the road and yeah. us not seeing our reps because we're used to seeing people here all the time. So uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We, still, you know, we text back and forth or we talk back and forth or email. So when something new is happening, she, she comes across pretty quick to us. So, so is that how you guys are communicating with all your reps now? Pretty much email, text, phone calls, and so forth? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, Okay, we've had a few reps uh, that are starting to hit the road now. Uh, some companies are letting them, you know, kind of step into stores just a little bit that are open. So we're starting to see a few people. Uh, hopefully, uh, and maybe by June, things will loosen up a little bit more and we'll, we'll get a little bit more going on. Yeah, I think we've been talking about it, uh, uh, getting the reps out at least. Um, the big thing is sort of the overnight the travel right now, but where, where reps can get out and and kind of day trip and make and, and, and yes. run a circuit and see some people. I think that's going to happen sooner rather than later. Um, but yeah, we'll, you know, we'll, 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 big thing is you have, you have consumers that still want cigars. Right. Uh, we're still in the bill in, 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 in the situation where we have the ability to get you cigars. So, um, you know, you, you kind of, you kind of make do the human spirit is a wonderful thing, man. I mean, you know, we, we, yeah. you know, if our biggest problem is that we just want to figure out how to make sure people can still smoke cigars that, that pales in comparison to, uh, to what a lot of people have to deal with right now, especially you're you're in a military city, so uh, so I'm, I'm sure you guys uh, uh, you know kind of uh, have a better appreciation for how important it is for with the people that really sort of keep things run and have to go through. So uh, so you know we, yeah. we, we we got a we got a light lift compared to that. Yeah, we we actually uh, we probably we planned our first event, which uh, Carolyn's going to be uh, involved in. We're doing a sporting play event June the fourth. And what is this again? Sports and play? play event, like it's a shotgun shooting. Wow. Okay. It, uh, basically, it mimics hunting. You go to play golf. You know, uh, you go to different stations and you shoot at the clay pigeons. And wow. uh, yeah, so we're doing it, and we actually have 14 of our reps. Carolee is one. She's going to be involved with us too, and we're going to all go out and shoot. And uh, it's I an active activity. She's going to shoot all of you guys. I, I, I knew. Well, I, knew <laughs> I sent her the the email that we were doing it. I knew she was going to be a yes, I'm in. So I'm yeah. excited to, to get her on. on her, board. her social media name is 50 Cal Cigar Girl. So you <laughs> <laughs> you figure it out. Yeah. yeah. You might just have to limit the artillery that she could bring out to the uh, to, to the range, man. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. So, yeah, it, it's funny. It's the first event because we haven't done anything in months, which is our calendar is always full. You know, we have different manufacturers coming in. <laughs> and happening, so. For us, it's been a challenge just to just just to be selling cigars. You know, yeah. I almost feel like I'm back in the mall. People walk in, get cigars, and go back out the door. Like, uh, so, uh, so, so that that gap where you had events planned that you couldn't do, are you going to just kind of reset your calendar and sort of reschedule those events back and, and, and you know to lay the backside of the year or work it in or? or well, and there's no telling because you know, I mean, maybe you know, maybe. The great Sean Williams has already got an event scheduled October and November and December, and those are probably going to still stay on the book. So we're going to have to probably shuffle uh, to make events happen as we move forward. Um, uh, we just felt that our customers and our manufacturer reps, everybody's tired of being at home, and we felt we could safe distance in an event where everybody's outside uh, shooting clay pigeons and having a lot of fun, smoking cigars. So uh, anybody, hey, if you want to come on down, uh, you're too far away. You probably don't want to fly, but uh, – you know, they all have customers. We still have a few slots. Yeah. Uh, it'll be a good, good event. In the good old days, uh, uh, the, the couple times I made it to your shop, it was all it was all my shit, man. We drove, you know, so <laughs> it's not it's not that far. So maybe that's that's a possibility. But I tell yeah. you what, you're, you're doing something right. I'm thinking early on the events that we're going to try to do. We're going to, you know, weather permitting, be outside. I think that's going to be the easiest thing. Uh, we want to get a cluster of people together. At yeah. least in, in the near term. So that, that's awesome that you're doing that, man. Uh, that that, that sounds, sounds like a lot of fun. Sounds yeah. Like and, and that was the goal. We figured, you know, by June, everything looks like if everything stays tracked, you know, everything's starting to open up just a little bit. People are allowed to get together in certain size groups, you know, uh, you know, no hundreds of them like, you know, typically we have when we have an event in the store. So uh, it's, a, it's a more limited event. So it's, it's a, it's gonna be fun. I, I just we just need to do something. We just we're not used to just sitting here, you know, not putting an event together or do it. That's why yeah. Tom's doing a great job at these uh, 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 video chats that we have with our customers and put it on FaceTime and stuff like that. So, and I tell you what, this is great. I didn't realize that you guys had just started doing this, uh, uh, you know, 
over the last few weeks. I mean, um, as, 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 as stressful as this situation is, there are some, some key learnings that I think we're all going to be able to take away and we're going to be able to use to, to, to enhance our business going forward once things are, are, are running at full tilt. I mean, there's a lot of value in this. And, and, uh, and um, you know, I think all, the, all of these things that we've had to learn uh, over, over the last couple of months are going to help us long term. Uh, yeah. regardless. So this is, I mean, you guys got, got this thing coming along. This is, uh, this is great. This is great. I'm happy to be able to do this. You know? yeah, well, we appreciate it. It's like we were talking about earlier before we went live here. You know, it's like 40 years I've been in the cigar business. And, and this is nothing, it's, you can't plan for this, you know. It's like, what are you going to do, you know. Sometimes I go home and I don't care if we work that hard at the store, but I'm mentally stressed on trying to think, uh, how much do we want to order, you know. How do we want to do this? How do we want to do that? It's just everything is so top and turvy. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, think, I think you guys have, uh, are making the best of it. So that, that's about all we can do, man. That's about all we can do. Yeah, yeah. How's the cigar coming along, man? How you, uh, 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 yeah, that's actually doing very well. Yeah. <laughs> and if this is your first time, I know you got the memory, but is this the first one you've actually had a chance to light up? It is actually the first one I've had a chance to light up. Good, good, good. Well, I think since the great Sean Williams is going to be on live with us here today, I'd, I'd smoke their brand new cigar. So. Trouble hearing you, Sean. I don't know. Are you are you ever here, Tom? I can hear him a little bit. I can hear him a little bit. It's kind of hard. Yeah, it might be a device, you know, at his end. Yeah, because it's if it's an iPad, maybe. Yeah. So, um. I'm trying to think of a trivia question we could ask so we can kind of give away a couple cigars or something. Got a good trivia question for it, Sean? Trivia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, we, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. Do you remember Let me get a little closer to his device. I can hear you guys. Can you hear me, Wayne? I can hear you fine. Now have him get a little closer to his device. Oh, he dropped out. I don't know what happened. Oops. It may well, be his internet, maybe a. Uh, um, with a maybe it was on an iPad or something. It's better if you have like headphones and the mic when you're on an iPad. But uh, I didn't hear his question. Maybe he'll type it in the comments for us later on. Let's see. Yeah, we can't. We dropped him. It's possible his internet went out or Siddle got lost for a minute. But well, it was, it was great having Sean on. Um, yeah. So maybe we can come up. A good trivia question was when was Cohiba Red Dot first launched in the United States? Um, That's a good. Search. We got uh, three days. We'll do a little live giveaway. Hey, there he is. He's back. So I, 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 I got too ambitious. I tried to go into the chat function and, 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 and it killed everything. So, um, all right. Uh, we can yeah. hear you pretty good now. All right. So, you said, uh, I heard the trivia question, though. Uh, when was the first Cobra Red Dot released? Is that the trivia yeah. question? Yes. All right. All right. We're so, put that out to our, our uh, uh, watchers and give them three days to come up with an answer. Tom will. 
uh, looking at all the comments when they come in, and uh, we'll give a pack of Cohiba cigars away to uh, uh, the person that answers the question first. So, so it's only one. It's only one right answer. Um, I would think there's, so. the, there's the original red dot, and then there's the no, no, no. I mean, I mean, not only one right answer, only one prize winner. I guess is what I'm saying. Well, we unless we want to do another trivia question. We could do that, or we could draw, you know, three names, so three people who get it right. So I'll I'll write down everyone's name on a ticket, and then we go live, and Wayne pulls out the so, ticket. So, so to... I, I, I want to do something. Um, okay. So do you guys have the new blue pequeños in the uh, the six pack of the of the of the Cleveland blue pequeños, the beautiful little packs? Yes. 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 Well, yeah. I'm, I, I want I want to send you guys some of those. I'll send you ten of those. Okay. You run whatever kind of questions you want. And whatever you want to throw in, that's fine. But I want to, each winner can get uh, at least one of those uh, those, those six packs of the Blue Bikinos. And okay. that's going to be on me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. awesome. yeah. And I can think of all the trivia questions, but I want to I want to at least make sure that 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 uh, we sweeten the pot a little bit for you guys. Uh, sounds good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe a second trivia question is how many Cohiba front marks as far as different ones? Like uh, you got the regular red dot, you got the blue, you got the Nicaragua, I'm not going to name any more. How many different ones are there currently in production? Um, the Casser, the yeah, I, I, if somebody can come up with that, I mean that that's that that's worth a lot because I know they're going to think of some things that may have been special releases or may not be currently in production. So, um, so I'll see you guys the answer the answer to that question. Okay, that's good. and of course the answer to when the original Red Dot came out. Um, and let's think of another. Um, but let, let's go old school on them. The the original Cohiba that came out in Cuba. Why was that made? Part of that whole uh, certified tobacconist history lessons that we have to get. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, that's a good one. All you right, can find that on the internet. But it's a. Uh, that's three good questions. You can pick a couple, couple guys from each of those and uh, and. Uh, yeah, give give them something to to, to to light into the summer with. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. a good time. Yeah. And uh, did you say you you were trying to make it to our shooting event? I, I'm gonna. I have, I'm saying that without looking at my calendar, which you know, obviously my calendar is already kind of set. Um, and when 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 are you guys doing it though? Again, June the fourth. That's the first week of June. I, yeah, it's a Thursday. Yeah. Um, I'm so supposed to actually have been here in Atlanta on the third, which may work out if if they're not letting us actually hop on airplanes yet. Um, if it's possible, I will. I'm not sure though. Okay. Um, and I also need to look and see if I can drive. Uh, I know I can, but just I don't remember exactly what the distance is uh, because they may not want us on airplanes just yet. Um, okay. Yeah, and and every week we have a different call and they we can fire drive. up. We can fire up the Anstead's private jet and get you anywhere. <laughs> oh, man. listen, listen. Don't threaten me with a good time. Come on. <laughs> where, do you, where do you live, Sean? Sorry? Where do you live? I'm in Atlanta, so I'm not too far away. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Six hours away. That's not Is bad. That six hours? I didn't even remember. Is that only six hours? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, like, it's like driving to New Orleans. That's not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to talk to about that. And uh, if I can make that, uh, I will. That'd be, that'd be a nice way to stretch my legs and get out this outdoor thing and uh, – yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, and to all of our listeners and viewers, just to let them know, uh, we have actually uh, 14 different uh, factory reps going to be at this event. So it's a multi-vendor event for us. Um, so uh, all the teams, we're going to try to split up a different rep or a different personality with every team. So if you, if you haven't signed up for our shoot, make sure you do it. We don't have that many slots, but uh, we do have about a dozen or so left. And uh, you, you get a chance to shoot and have a good time. Eat some good food and uh, um, and some private jet. I like that. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're interested in joining and you get a chance to spend the the, the afternoon of the event with one of our vendors, it, it'd be awesome. It'd be awesome. But don't forget. Yeah. Sign up. Yeah. Two two. You, you you get to work out a few different things. You get to smoke cigars, work out some frustration, shooting things, and be yeah. outside. It's just I mean, you know, you can't lose. <laughs> yeah. And then and then after that. When we're all done shooting. Everyone's coming back here to Anstead's for a barbecue cigar social. So it's going to be a really nice time to relax and wine. And, you know, we'll present the trophies for best men shooters, best lady shooters, and best teams. Yeah. Nice. Nice. 
Yeah, that sounds fun. All that's just fun. to the grave here at Anstead. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm definitely gonna see if I can make that. I, I, I can't say for sure until I talk to you know a few people involved, but uh, that that sounds fun, especially if it's only six, six hour drive. That 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 yeah. seems a lot more doable. Yeah, a lot more doable. Yeah, that'll be good. Well, I think the uh, about wraps up our show today. Unless uh, we've got any good parting advice from the wise Sean Williams from Cohiba. Oh no, man, just uh, again, I appreciate you guys having me. I appreciate you creating this platform for your listeners and for 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 myself and other cigar uh, uh, guys to come on and talk to you and talk directly to your listeners and interact. So I really appreciate. it. I think it's great, and uh, look forward to smoking cigars and. And uh, hanging out with you guys uh, in person, uh, uh, hopefully soon. Man. Hopefully yeah, soon. We don't see you in June. I know we'll get you down here, not too far down the road. Absolutely, absolutely, man. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, All right, John. Thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks, Sean. Appreciate Thanks, it. Uh, Take no care. Problem. All right.